You alright guys? I'm Dan. And I'm Andy. Welcome to Game Couch. Daylight! Yay! Yay! So, as everyone is probably aware, November 6th sees the release of the hugely anticipated Halo 4. Um, Halo 4 is actually the seventh release in the Halo franchise so far. Seventh? Yeah. So not eight? Oh yeah, I forgot about Halo Wars. And so since everybody's so excited, we thought we'd take a look at the games so far and uh, kind of give an opinion on what we thought of each one on the way through. It's worth mentioning that we won't be talking about the multiplayer. Um, Halo's influence on Xbox Live is a whole fucking story to itself, so we'll just be leaving that off for this review. Shall we go? Yes. Right, so to kick off, we'll start with uh, Halo Combat Evolved, which is... To be honest, the only reason neither of us bought an Xbox in the first place. And we haven't looked back since. We open with the mysterious ring planet in the middle of space, and for the first time we get to see the Pillar of Autumn. As the evil aliens, the Covenant, are starting to board the ship, we are introduced to our protagonist, Spartan 117, the Master Chief. Essentially a super soldier cyborg who's effectively a big green fridge with arms and legs. <laughs> From here on out, Halo CE's blood, bullets and bangs from start to finish, and in my book, sits on the pedestal as one of the best first-person shooters ever made, and it's likely to for a very long time. What made Halo so good was that it played smoothly, brutally, with a variety of human and alien weapons, as well as a vast array of baddies, each with their own unique characteristics that made each battle feel different and challenging, as well as being a shitload of fun, and the inclusion of extended vehicle combat sequences ranging from heavy-duty bat battle tanks to mid-air dogfights in the Nimble Banshee just made it all the better. As the game progressed, the story became more and more intriguing, each level like having its own atmosphere and even pushing towards the horror side of things with the inclusion of the Flood. And it even had a fantastic soundtrack, which has become one of the iconic game soundtracks in my opinion. And what made it even better was the inclusion of Master Chief and the partner Cortana, and their relationship throughout the game led to some great dialogue scenes which gave depth to a character who could as easily just been a big green empty helmet. Of course, 343 Guilty Spark shows up and so do the Parasite Flood and adamant that they will never, never reach Earth, Master Chief blows Halo to bits and escapes after an extended driving sequence which may be one of the most exciting finales to a game I've ever played. Um, and to finish off, Halo Combat Evolve was awesome fun and it still is. Yeah, it's great. As you'd expect from a game as successful as Halo Combat Evolved, we got ourselves a sequel. Halo 2 brought some new toys to the Halo universe, including a brand new shiny fridge for Master Chief to wear, and a haircut for Cortana. We were also given dual wielding, and some new weapons, and some new baddies, and a much rockier soundtrack. We also got the new character for the campaign, an Arbiter, who was a disgraced elite general who failed to stop Master Chief from blowing up the original Halo. Not everybody was impressed with this revelation, and why I wasn't, the elites were the baddies in the first one after all, and so what made them think that I wanted to hear the Covenant side of the story? Not only that, but the Arbiter's missions were quite dull and boring anyway. I didn't really care that there was a band of renegade heretic elites who'd learned the true literature of the Halo Ravings as weapons. I remember quite enjoying playing as the Arbiter, because mm -hmm. I, I did think it was quite interesting that we could bounce from one side to the other, yeah. and just see a bit more of what was going on, but I will be fair, it did feel a little bit tacked on. Aye. In our opinion at least, Halo 2 was a considerable letdown. Due to the time restraints, Bungie were actually forced to cut the game short and get rid of some of its levels completely. Unfortunately, this really shines through during the gameplay. It's possible to run through several of the levels without fighting anybody, and it makes it feel really unfinished. And it's blatantly obvious that something had been removed or replaced. And the cliffhanger ending, which Bungie themselves admitted was disappointing, um, was just quite simply infuriating. It wasn't infuriating in the sense that it was bad because nobody minds a cliffhanger. It was just the fact that, like, after all of that, you wanted the game to finish and it didn't. That was what was annoying about it. Aye. Halo 2 still had its pluses, the combat was smoother, the graphics were a vast improvement, and making Sergeant Johnson an actual character was an awesome idea. Um, we got to see a bit more of Earth, um, the relationship between Cortana and the Chief was expanded, um, and then brought to a heartbreaking end when he's forced to leave her behind on high charity when returning to Earth. Halo 2 is not the worst game in the franchise, but it's certainly not as good as Halo CE. Nah. Anticipation for Halo 3 topped that of even Halo 2, and when it arrived, it sold in enough to land the spot of fifth highest selling Xbox game of all time, and is still the best selling Halo game. 
Now wearing a HD fridge, the Master Chief lands on Earth once more in Africa, only to discover that his efforts to stop the flood of reaching the home world were in vain. It certainly ramped up the stakes. It's now clear that the fate of the universe rests on Chief's shoulders, and with much more of a sombre musical score and a darker story, Halo 3 certainly felt a lot heavier than its predecessors. The plot and its pacing was vastly superior to Halo 2, which was a welcome relief, and returning the Chief as the main protagonist and placing the Arbiter in a secondary role was one of the better decisions Bungie made for definitely, the game. Definitely. The Chief reuniting with Cortana as well was one of the most heartwarming moments in the series, and the death of Sergeant Johnson was devastating. Yeah, I nearly cried, it was horrible. <laughs> Graphically, Halo 3 stepped it up again, uh, losing out on the Elite as baddies sucked because the Brutes just simply don't cut it on their own. Bubbles. Bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> Bubbles. Once again, there was a switch around of the weapons. We got our treasured assault rifle back and the score pistol. Um, we got some new vehicles and some way more impressive and much larger levels than Halo 2. And whilst Halo 3 was a tenfold better than the second one, it still wasn't as good as Halo CE, however. But, as the final instalment of the trilogy, it did its job well enough and it left us satisfied that we'd saved the universe from an evil alien threat. Um, to tell you the truth, I forgot about Halo Wars earlier, uh, mainly because I only played it for about an hour and gave up. Um, I genuinely didn't think it was very good. Um, not because it's an RTS, just because it wasn't a very good RTS. Um, Andy never played it, so we don't really have much to say on that subject at all. We were introduced to the new protagonist who's referred to as the Rookie. He's an orbital drop shock trooper who's crash landed on New Mombasa. Set between Halos 2 and 3, you spend most of the time trying to uncover what happened to the rest of your squad, and in the process you get to play as the rest of the elite unit over the course of the day and night. ODST was another disappointment in the series. Uh, Build as a stealthy take on the franchise with some unique silence weapons, it simply didn't deliver that. And despite the lack of fridge based superhumanryness, um, <laughs> the game still descended into a typical first person shooter um, run and gun, basically. Easily the best part of the game were the sections where you search for clues uh, on the darkened streets of New Mombasa. And with that kind of like stealthy film noir soundtrack, it did feel really atmospheric. Um, but this, those sections simply were too short. Um, and the rest of the game, as we said, was just the same as the previous installments. I think the thing I disliked most about ODST was after a lengthy and fairly enjoyable introduction, the game finished. <laughs> <laughs> Halo Reach would be the last game in the series from Bungie, with 343 Studios taking the reins of the franchise from that point on. Um, Reach was also a return to form. It delivered exactly what we've been waiting for since Halo 2. You take control of Noble 6, a Spartan decked out in either a regular looking fridge or a rather curvaceous looking fridge. Mm -hmm. Alongside five other Spartans also decked out as fridges, except for George, who turns up in the majority of a house. Reaches the <laughs> prequel to the Halo series, and it ends directly before the events that happened in the first game. Yeah. The return of health packs gave the game a ret retro feel and led to those exciting and desperate moments where you're down to one red bar and you're hunting for another health pack under fire. Um, Elites and Hunters were returned as baddies and felt dangerous again. Um, and the game as a whole actually felt more difficult compared to previous instalments. And for the first time we got to see other Spartans, even without the helmets on, we got to see how they interacted, how they worked together as a team to accomplish missions, and it was really interesting to be honest. What you were saying there about the um, seeing the Spartans interacting with each other without yeah. the helmets on, for somebody like me who's never read the Expanded Universe books, it was quite cool because then it confirmed to me that they're not robot super soldiers if you know yeah. what I mean, they are actually just people who are beefed up a bit. Yeah, and also that the Chief wasn't the only one, which we'd always thought from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. The plot was interesting and often desperate, as the world of Reach was sorely brought down by the Covenant while the Noble team was trying to get Cortana to Captain Keys to get her off world. And we even got an awesome zero-g space battle in a ship called a Sabre, which is something that the Halo fans have been asking for for ages. Yeah. Overall, Reach really was the best way Bungie could have finished their part of the franchise. It was a definite high note, and it was great to see them go out on a high rather than binning it like they could have. Yeah, they could have ended it with ODST and it would have just been <laughs> so disappointing. <laughs> Three Four Three Studios' first step into the realm of Halo was with the release of Halo Combat Evolved in a high definition graphics update anniversary edition. Um, to be honest, it looks awesome. The updated sound is also a wet up and bonus. Nothing with regards to the gameplay was changed, and there was even a button that let you play with the original graphics, which I thought was quite cool. Yeah. The game was also now playable in 3D, which does look really cool. Uh, we did try recording in 3D, but uh, this happened.
and we went back in time. So that was the Halo series so far. We're very excited for Halo 4 and we really hope it lives up to the hype. Definitely. So anyway, as usual, we hope you enjoyed the video. Um, any comments, questions or requests for videos that you want us to do in the future, stick them in the comments below. Please check us out on Facebook and Twitter and uh, don't forget to subscribe. See you later. See ya. Combat one bird. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, right. <laughs>